Welcome to yet another installment in the 9mm ammo quest, where I've been searching for the best performing defensive ammo from a 3-inch barreled 9mm pistol. Tried a lot, the stack is getting smaller, and it's going to get cut down some more because today we're testing two rounds. This is the famous Illinois State Police Load, the Federal 9BPLE plus P plus 115 grain high shock bullet. And this is the Winchester offering, also plus P plus the 9mm Ranger T in 127 grain. Now, long time watchers will know that I hate non standard ammo. I, I don't think it's a good idea. Trying to push your gun beyond what it's designed to do and, and using ammo that's beyond what the gun's designed to do, every pistol I've ever seen has said, don't use plus P plus ammo in there. That said, these are law enforcement only rounds. They say law enforcement right on them. They have a good reputation as being good performers. So we're going to find out what they actually do. How do they compare to the modern standards? Because these were developed before the modern standards were put in place. And I'm also going to going to deviate from my normal testing for this because a three inch pistol will do it. You know, I'm searching for the best performing ammo from a three inch pistol, but these came out before three inch pistol was out and and the police don't use three inch pistols so the Illinois State Police developed this load and they were using four inch barrel guns so I'm gonna also test this from a four inch and while I'm at it I'm gonna use a six inch barrel and we'll see how much of a difference the small gun the medium gun and the large gun make in how these rounds perform From the three different barrels, we can see three very different levels of performance. From the three inch barrel, it's nothing special. It stopped at 11 inches. It looked like it expanded properly. It looks okay. But from the four inch barrel, penetrated all the way to 16 inches. We can see it just peeking out of the end of the gel block here. And as you saw, that there was a big increase in velocity and a much bigger temporary cavity was put on display, a lot more impact happened there. And then from the six inch barrel, it actually didn't go as far as it did from the four inch. From the six inch barrel, it stopped at 14 and a quarter inches. So penetration wise, I mean, this load has a great reputation. Well, it also looks like it does pretty well on the FBI standard testing. People have been asking, you know, how would these legendary loads do? Uh, a bullet that stops at 16 inches is a pretty good performer and that's what the 9BPLE did from the 4 inch barrel which is the size of gun it was generally made to work from. Fired from the three different barrels, the Ranger did pretty well in all cases. From the three inch barrel, it did over penetrate a tiny bit, 18 and a quarter inches. From the four inch barrel, it penetrated quite a bit more. It went to 20 inches. You know, when our cutoff's 18, 20 is, is notable. And then from the biggest gun, this six inch barrel, we had obviously the highest velocity and it went to 16 and a half inches. Very interesting. In any case, I think all three of these hits would have proven to be a significant, substantial hit. It'll be interesting to see how the bullets differ from the different velocities here when we get to the bullet exam. Let's first look at the Rangers. They're kind of perfect. Even the three inch barrel gun expanded beautifully and it created these nasty, vicious talons that the Ranger T has, which is you know, that's, that's what the Black Talon got its name from. Well, these Ranger T's have them too. They stick out and they're sharp as heck. Uh, the 4-inch gun expanded not quite as big as the 3-inch, and the 6-inch gun expanded huge. Uh, penetration depth was kind of fantastic. Uh, granted, we have a couple cases of over-penetration here. This one did 18 and a half inches. This one did 20 inches. So from the 3-inch barrel gun, I don't care about the half an inch. I'm going to say that this would have done a fantastic job on its way through the body. It may have gone just a little bit over, but it's only a little bit. And these talons, 
they're a nightmare to dig the bullet out of gel or if you're a hunter if you're trying to dig it out of the game that you've taken it's it's gonna cut you it's just nasty but I think their their reputation is maybe a little overstated. They're not going to be slicing flesh with these talons all the way through the travel, through the body, because the way cavitation works, when that bullet is passing through at high speed, the flesh bends around it. It, it creates a wave as it goes through, so these talons probably would not be in contact with the flesh until the end of the bullet travel when it's not going so fast and when it's not able to create that cavitation. In that case, then, yeah, these talons are going to get in into play and start cutting flesh. And towards the end of bullet travel is usually around where the vital organs are. So, that, you know, that's, that's, there's a reason this has a, a good reputation on the street. This is, that's an effective design. Um, from the three inch gun, penetration was good. The four inch gun, the penetration, it was over. It was 20 inches. And it actually seems like it's a little smaller than the three inch gun bullet, which is surprising. But uh, still, you know, somebody shot by that is not going to have enjoyed the process. Interestingly, from the six inch gun, expansion is much more complete, much bigger. You can see from the four inch gun how much bullet w went unused on the expansion. Whereas from the six inch, it's, you know, really squatted down there. It really expanded down. So you got a great big bullet and you got fantastic penetration, 16 and a half inches. What you lose, which you only lose a little bit, is that now the talons aren't really going to come into play. They're bent so far backwards that they're not really an issue. I mean, you can see them clearly displayed on the three inch and the four inch barrel. The six inch, you can't even see them. So it becomes more like a conventional bullet, still a hard hitting, big expanding conventional bullet. So the Rangers did great. 90 PLE. Um, okay. This is the same bullet as the Federal High Shock. It's just driven to higher velocities, about a hundred feet per second higher in the case of the three inch barrel. In the high shocks from a three inch barrel, they expanded okay, they penetrated okay. With the additional velocity from the three inch barrel on the 9B PLE, we got a tremendous amount of expansion. I mean, look at that, that's a gigantic bullet compared to what we got in the lead on the, on the Ranger. It's a huge bullet. The problem is it didn't penetrate quite to where our minimums were. It went to 11 inches. It's not bad, that's decent. It's just nothing special, I mean, why why go to the vaunted fabled 9B PLE and, and get a bullet that just goes 11 inches in expense? We, I've tested lots and lots and lots of bullets that do that. So from a three inch gun, I don't really see the point. Four inch gun, it's kind of a different story. First of all, the penetration was ideal, hit 16 inches. This one actually, you could see in the slow-mo, it, it actually penetrated out of the one block and bounced off the other. So it stopped really exactly at 16 inches. Uh, it shed a lot of weight. It broke a lot of fragments off. You can really see what happened. If you look at this bullet here, you can see these, not petals, but these pieces that ended up ripping off of this bullet here. So this goes two ways. Sometimes people think, ooh, this is great because it's fragmenting. It's like a rifle round. Not really. These these don't fly out like a rifle round. They don't cause more damage in the temporary cavity like a rifle round does. They they will usually be found within a couple centimeters of the general wound track. So they may make a slightly bigger wound track where they come off, but not necessarily a big deal. The drawback to that is that you end up with a very little bullet as compared to what you could have had. That said, it did fine. It did fine. The six inch bullet actually penetrated just a little shorter it's a little bigger and penetrated a little bit shorter than the four inch gun did and it lost an equal amount of, of shards, just shards everywhere. So they did fine. They all did fine. The only one that didn't meet the standards I was really looking for, at least minimum penetration, proper expansion was this one. The rest of them, if you had these in the gun, they could and would do the job. They perform fine. And I'm still not going to recommend them. Why? Because they're plus P plus. It, it, it's a non-standard caliber. It, the, the recoil, the, it makes your 9mm gun kick just like a 40. And why wouldn't it? It's basically, both of these rounds are basically exhibiting the same power of a 40 Smith & Wesson. So, if you want the power of a 40, 
why not just get a 40 and use ammo that's made for it? You know, get, use a use a Ranger T or, or an HST or a Gold Dot in 40 Smith & Wesson. Get all that these will do, but do it within a standard that won't compromise your gun, where there's not big red text warnings in your owner's manual saying, don't use plus P plus. It's not that this ammo doesn't work. It's that it's overdriven. And I, I know that some people think that that's an appealing thing. You know, wow, I'm able to get the most out of my 9mm. No, you're able to push your 9mm too far. If your car has a red line of 8,000 RPMs, do you think it'd be a good idea to go in there and take that rev limiter out and run the car to 11,000 RPMs? It, it's lunacy. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't think you would do that, but I, you know, I, I know that I'm to some degree goring someone's sacred cow when I say about 9BPLE that I wouldn't use it today, but I just got to report it the way I see it. I think the 40 is a great round. I think there are reasons that the Illinois State Police quit using 9BPLE 15 years ago and moved over to 40. They get the same power, they get the same performance, they're reportedly quite happy with it, and they don't have to use a non-standard loading that is more pressure than the gun's designed to handle. So. These are these perform fine. If you have these loaded in your gun, you are well armed. But if you're using a nine, I mean, you can get better penetration and expansion out of an HST or a gold dot in nine millimeter. And if you want the power and the speed that these deliver, you can get that with a 40. So I don't really see in today's modern gun, I, I'm not going to be recommending these anyway. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified the next time a video is posted.